In this video, we are going to start talking about uh, the transform that we use for the discrete time signals, which is called the Z transform. And the Z transform is defined as F of Z equals summation of F of N multiplied by Z to the power negative N. Or N goes from negative infinity to infinity. This is called the bilateral Z transform. Bilateral or two sided Z transform because it goes in the negative side and the positive side. It goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. However, in our course, we are going to focus only on the single sided. Z transform or unilateral Z transform where F of Z is summation from N equals 0 to infinity F of N Z to the power negative N so we are going to assume by default that our signals they are 0 for the negative N they exist only for n equals 0 and for the positive n and they are 0 for the negative side so by default similar to the plus transform we assume that our signals they exist only in the positive side so this is the unilateral uh, or single single sided uh, z transform okay there is an equation there is an equation for the inverse z transform the equation is again complicated equation so the equation of the inverse Z transform is f of n equals 1 over 2 pi j integration over a closed path gamma f of z z to the power n negative 1 dz where this closed path it goes counter clock wise closed path inside the region of convergence again we have here for the z transform we have a region of convergence a region where the z transform converges to a certain value where the z transform exists outside this region the z transform goes to infinity it diverges to inf infinity so we call this region where the z transform converges to a finite value we call it region of convergence when you do the inverse z transform you have to choose a closed path counterclockwise closed path inside this region of convergence however because this integral is complicated we are not going to use this integral in order to do the inverse z transform and we are going to use the tables and the partial fractions uh, similar to the plus transform in order to do the inverse z transform and because we are not going to use the uh, the inverse uh, z transform integral we will not be interested so much about the region of convergence when we do the z transform so uh, keep in mind that there is something called region of convergence where uh, where the z transform exists and we are going to mention it maybe one or two times in the uh, in the in the first uh, few examples however later we are not going to mention region of convergence because we are not going to use the integral to do the inverse uh, z transform okay that basically the z transform it's a summation of each sample of your discrete time function multiplied by z to the power negative n okay so it will be for example f of z f of z will be f of zero multiplied by z to the power zero plus f of one multiply by z to the power negative 1 plus f of 2 multiply by z to the power negative 2 and so on so this is basically uh, the z transform it's a summation of each sample multiply by z to the power uh, negative n let's take an example to see how to calculate the z transform and keep in mind keep in mind that we have this summation 
summation of a to the power n because this summation will be useful to us from n equals 0 to infinity is 1 over 1 minus a only if the magnitude of a is less than 1. So keep this in mind because we are going to use it uh, so many times. Okay, so let's take now an example. The first example it says, can find the z transform, find the z transform of delta first delta of n, second we need to find for the yield step. So these are the famous functions that we uh, use to deal with. The third transform is for uh, an exponential and the exponential here is defined as a to the power n un. So here let's start with the first one, solution f of z for the first one, f of z will be summation of delta n z to the power negative n from n equals 0 to infinity. If you expand this, uh, let's go slowly here, if you expand this, you will find that you have delta of 0, z to the power 0, then delta of 1, z to the power negative 1, z, then delta of 2, z to the power negative 2, and so on, right? The only term that will have a value, a non zero value, is the first term, because delta of 0 is the only term that is 1. Delta of 1 is 0, delta of 2 is 0, delta of 3 is 0, delta of anything else is 0. So the only value or the only term that will give you a value is delta of 0, because delta of 0 is 1 multiplied by z to the power 0, which is also 1. This will give you 1, right? Other terms will be 0. Delta of 1 is 0, delta of 2 is 0, and all other terms are 0. So here the z transform of delta n is 1. Let's take the second example, the unit step. The z transform of the unit step will be, let's write it like this, of the unit step is summation of u of n z to the power negative n from n equals 0 to infinity, right? And u of n for n equals 0 to infinity, u of n is 1. So we can write this as summation of z to the power negative n from n equals 0 to infinity and z to the power negative n multiplied by 1 the unit step, right? so this is very similar to this summation, right? however, a here is z to the power negative 1 you can say that a is z to the power negative 1 so this summation will give you one of two things if z to the power negative 1 is less than 1 if magnitude z to the power negative 1 is less than 1 then this summation will be this summation will be this summation will be uh, equal to what? So the z transform of the unit step here will be 1 over 1 minus a, 1 over 1 minus z inverse. So in order to write this summation using this form, you have to have magnitude of a to be less than 1, right? So if magnitude of z to the negative 1 is less than 1, you can get the z transform like this. But what happens if magnitude of z to the power negative 1 is not less than 1, it's greater than 1? If this is greater than 1, then when you sum it, it will give you infinity. So if z to the power negative 1 as magnitude is greater than 1, then the z transform, z transform, Diverse and goes to infinity, right? So if z to the power negative 1 is greater than 1, you are adding uh, 2, 4, 8, 16, uh, so that summation will go to infinity. That's why we say that z transform exists only in this region. So this is our region of convergence. So the region of convergence for this transform, the region of convergence for the unit step is when magnitude z to the power negative 1 is less than 1. What does it mean magnitude z to the power negative 1 is less than 1? This means that z itself is greater than 1, right? If z, if z 
to the negative one, is it? To the power negative one. Is less than one, this means that z huh, is greater than one. Magnitude z is greater than one, which means that z lies outside the unit circle. Outside the unit circle. If z in general is a complex huh, number, which can be represented by real of z and imaginary of z as usual, huh, then the region of convergence here is when magnitude of z is greater than one outside this unit circle. This is what we call the unit circle. Magnitude z greater than 1 means that we are outside this unit circle. This is the region of convergence. If z is inside the unit circle, then the z transform will not exist. It will be infinity. It will diverge to infinity. So this is the definition of the region of convergence. And uh, this is the z transform of the unit step. And here, some people believe it like this. Uh, dealing with z to the power negative 1, with negative powers, or uh, it's easier to multiply z up and down, so you will get z over z minus 1. So the uh, z transform of the unit step will be z over z minus 1. Of course, given that the region of convergence, we are in the region of convergence, okay? Let's solve the next example. The next example says, we need to calculate the z transform of a to the power n un. So the z transform of a to the power n u of n it will be summation a to the power n u n z to the power negative n from n equals zero to infinity, right? And from 0 to infinity, u of n is 1. So you can remove u of n here. Then the summation can be written as summation from n equals 0 to infinity. a, z to the power negative 1, all to the power n, right? Again, we go back to the same summation that we, and I told you that we are going to use a lot. Summation a to the power n, uh, or a constant to the power n from n equals 0 to infinity, it's 1 over 1 minus a, condition that magnitude a is less than 1. So here again, we have something to the power n from n equals 0 to infinity, so this will give you 1 over 1 minus a z to the power negative 1. Of course, condition, condition that magnitude a z minus 1 is less than 1. This is the region of convergence. Which means you can write it as magnitude z to the power negative 1 is less than 1 over a, okay? Or magnitude z will be greater than a. So the region of convergence here, the region of convergence here is that z must be outside a circle of radius a. Circle of radius a. Outside the circle of radius a, this is the region of convergence. As I promised, I'm going to mention the region of convergence in the first few examples only, and then we will not mention it later. So this is now our z transform of this function, which we can write if you multiply z up and down to get rid of the negative power. So you will get z over z minus a. So now we solve three functions, three important functions, the delta, which uh, has a z transform of 1, unit step which has a z transform of z over z minus 1, the uh, exponential or a to the power n u n has a z transform of z over z minus a. We'll stop here in this video and we'll see you in the next video, inshallah.